everyone, it's Rhiannon here and I'm here to talk to you about another excellent book. Today, similarly to my last video, I want to talk about a whole series instead of just one book and that series is The Nevernight Chronicles by Jay Kristoff. Um, please insert <laughs> first book in series here, I, j I don't have it with me, it's back home in London. So this is an adult fantasy trilogy, uh, the first book is Nevernight which I am inserting a picture of here, the second book is God's Grave and the third book is Dark Dawn. Dark Dawn hasn't come out yet, it's coming out in September and I was very lucky to be sent an advanced copy by HarperCollins so thank you. When I opened the package that had this book in I literally screamed on the shop floor so I think that tells you how much I love this series. <laughs> I won't be spoiling anything in this video, don't worry, so if you've only read the first one or you've read the first two and you're waiting for the third one, I'm not going to reveal any plot details. Um, but hopefully for those of you who haven't read it, I can persuade you why this is definitely a series worth your time. So this series is set in a world, a fantasy world, that has three suns, as in suns in the sky, not not children. I was explaining this book to my friend and the whole time I was talking she thought I meant S-O-N instead of S-U-N and she was very very confused. So they are suns in the sky and because there are three suns it means that it's never dark except for once every six years I think all of the suns set and it's like completely pitch black you can't see anything. The structure of the world I would say is most inspired by Roman society. You've got like gladiators, a senate, the main city, God's Grave, kind of reminds me of Venice. It's like full of canals, but it's a very murdery, corrupt Venice. So our main character is Mia Coveri, and she is 16 years old. Um, I just want to reiterate, she is 16, but this is not a young adult series. This is very much adult fantasy. There are graphic descriptions of violence and sex. It's, it's not YA, it's firmly adult. Some people put it in YA, but I, they are wrong. <laughs> Anyway, Mia is 16. She belongs to a very, very high status family. Uh, but when she's 10, her father tries to lead a rebellion against the Senate um, and it fails. And so he's executed and her mum and little brother are thrown in prison and she is meant to also be executed, but she manages to escape. And she's taken in by this very grumpy, but very lovable uh, man called Mercurio. And she's saying how she wants revenge. And he's like, well, if you're serious, let me train you for six years and you can join the secret assassin school that I went to. So the first book, you're basically following her as she joins this assassin school to try and get revenge on all the people who wronged her and the people who killed her family. Um, but the assassin school is not a, it's not a walk in the park. It's very violent. People die basically like every other page in the first book, I think. Um, it's very much not a school for the faint-hearted, I would say. So the whole trilogy follows Mia as she's trying to enact revenge upon the people who killed her family, but also uncovering secrets and the like rotten heart of the world that she lives in. And to complicate matters, Mia also has a slightly strange power. There's not a lot of magic in this book, but uh, one of the main sources of magic in the book is Mia. She has the ability to manipulate the darkness and she can like draw a shadow over herself to hide herself away. She also has this little shadow demon in the shape of a cat who she calls Mr. Kindly, uh, who is one of my favorite characters. And he can take away all her fear. So when he's in her shadow, she's not scared of anything. And this creates a really interesting character because she is literally fearless, um, but then there are times when Mr. Kindly has to go away or he's not with her for some reason and the change that comes over her is really, really interesting and you see how she's been squashing this fear down and not feeling it and how much that would change you as a person if from the age of 10 to 16 you didn't feel fear about anything. So like I said, the first book is focused on her in her assassin school. Calling it assassin school makes it sound a lot nicer than it is. It's a very violent place, um, but she's in her assassin school. Um, and then the second and third book are set elsewhere, but I will not spoil you as to where, but let me just say they are very, very, very good. Mia is by far and away my favourite character, although I do love Mr. Kindly. It's just really refreshing to read a female protagonist who, yes, she is a strong female character. I mean, I hate that phrase. She has a really strange mix of being a really scary murderer, but also very, very soft. And you can tell that she has a very good heart. And I find that really interesting because yes, she is a killer, but she also explores the moral implications of what she's doing and she's questioning herself constantly like is this the right path I'm on is what I'm doing justified and oftentimes it's yes but sometimes it's no and uh, Christoph doesn't shy away from showing the full consequences of her actions. Another great thing is that Mia is bisexual um, and I don't think I've ever read a fantasy book with a bisexual main character and it's not 
fussed about, it's just who she is, um, and I really like that as well about her. If I had to pick a favourite book from the trilogy, I think it would be the second one, God's Grave, just because of what Mia goes through in that book and how it changes her perception of the world that she lives in. I always feel this way about trilogies. I always like the second one because the first one you're like getting to know everyone and then the third one you know that it's ending and that there's like no book after the one you're reading. So I always get really sad like halfway through and I'm like, oh no, this is the end. I'm not gonna read about them anymore. Um, so that's why the second one is my favorite, but they're all, they're all really good. And for those of you who have already read the first two, Dark Dawn is so worth reading. It wraps up the series in such a satisfying way. I mean, it does stomp on your heart a lot, but kind of in the best way. Um, and there were things that happened in this book that completely took me by surprise. As you can see, these books are also incredibly beautiful. The design that goes into them is breathtaking and it's the same with the paperbacks as well. Um, that's why I'm definitely going to buy me a copy of Dark Dawn when it comes out in hardback. I think Waterstones is even doing a special sprayed edge edition where these are black. Um, so there'll definitely be a link in the description if you want to check those out. And also if you're based in the UK, Jay Kristoff is doing a couple of events all around the UK um, to launch it in September. So 100% you should check those out as well. I would recommend this series for fans of Game of Thrones, uh, Lainey Taylor, Sarah J Mass. Basically if you just like a cool fan fantasy world and a kick-ass assassin. These are the books for you. So thanks for watching everyone. I hope you're having a lovely summer and I'll see you next time.